So there are some other things that we can do with our probability tables. Uh, we can ask some other interesting questions. Like maybe we want to know that if we were to perform this random event over and over and over, so rolling this dice, uh, what would the average or what would the mean value be if we were to add up all those results and divide by the total number of results, what would, what would it be? Um, so we can calculate that. So that is, remember, if we're looking for the mean or the true mean, that's the mu. And we call that a lot of times what is the expected value of our random variable. And there's actually a pretty simple equation that we can use. It is going to be the sum of the outcomes, x, members of the support, multiplied by their associated probability. So we could take this table and just expand it out and do the math really quick. All right, here we go. So let's work on finding, in this column, we're going to do x multiplied by its probability of success. All right, notice how we have each of those values. Uh, we know what this, the probability of success, it's the PMF. So we're just going to basically be taking the PMF value multiplied by the outcome. So here we've got 1 times 1 6, which gives me uh, 1 6. I've got 2 times 1 6, which is going to give me 2 6. I've got 3 times 1 6. Okay, you get the idea. 3 6, 4 times 1 6. 4, 6, 5 times 1, 6, 5, 6, and 6 times 1, 6, 6, 6. Okay, so I did that multiplication of these guys. Now, just because these happen to look like what the CDF is, this does not always equal what the CDF is. It just happens to be with, what, with a standard dice, and that's what it looks like. All right, but we've got, we've got those. Now what we need to do is that, remember, this kind of squiggle thing, capital sigma, or uh, the sigma value, it is the sum of all of those. OK, so we can do 5, so 6, 6, that's 1. 5, 6, and 1, 1 6, that's another 1. 2, 6, and 4, 6, that's another 1. And we've got 3, 6 right there. So the expected value of our discrete random variable is in fact equal to 3.5 or the sum of this column. And this will work for any discrete random variable. If you need to know the expected value and you've got some discrete random variable and you have its probability table, you can find the expected value. You just multiply the outcome by its associated probability of success all the way down and take a sum of it. And that will give us mu. All right, let's do one more. Another one that we're often interested in is uh, the variance. Before I move on to the variance, just note, I left off this 7, right, because uh, that was kind of it's outside of what our actual sample space is. So I'm just ignoring that 7. And just for help, I will just go ahead and erase OK. So the other thing that we oftentimes are interested in is talking about like some measures of spread or the variance. And remember, variance is equal to sigma squared. And we write this out a lot of times as the variance of our discrete random variable. Uh, this is going to be another summation. It's going to be the sum of our observation minus the expected value, or mu, squared multiplied by its associated probability of success. And let's put that whole thing in parentheses like that. And that will give us our variance. OK, so we just need a, another column then 
on our table. So let's just build another column. So this is going to be x minus mu squared multiplied by its associated probability of success. So we'll do probability little x. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do it. So we've got, this is going to be 1 minus 3.5 squared multiplied by 1 sixth. And I did this 1 minus 3.5 because the outcome was 1, the mean was 3.5, what we calculated down here, square it, multiply by the probability of success, this 1 sixth. All right, then we can do the next one. We can do 2 minus 3.5 squared times 1 over 6, and then we can do 3 minus 3.5 squared multiplied by 1 sixth, 4 minus 3.5 squared multiplied by 1 sixth, almost there, 5 minus 3.5 squared multiplied by 1 sixth, and here we go, 6 minus 3.5 squared times 1 sixth. All right, so we have all these individual parts, and then in order to do this guy, uh, we would, in fact, sum those all up to get the variance. Now, most of the time, we don't, like, we don't do this by hand. Um, we can use some of our tools, like Excel, or we can use um, software in order to kick out these values. Uh, and w I'll show you these, how to actually do this in the guide. I'm not good enough with decimal multiplication and uh, squaring in order to figure this off the top of my head. But suffice it to say, the variance of x would be equal to the sum, oops, too many squiggles, the sum of all of this. So let me just circle it real quick just so that we have an idea. We'd actually calculate out those values and we'd put them right there. So the sum of all of that. Once we calculated out that sum, we would have our variance. And then the last thing is that, okay, oftentimes we don't want the variance, we want to know what the standard deviation is, or the standard deviation of x. And this one, thankfully, is easy. If we calculated out the variance, all this is equal to is the square root of the variance of our random variable. So this is how, for any discrete random variable, how we could calculate out the mean or the expected value, how we can calculate out the variance, and how we can calculate out the standard deviation.